chat box, please. Can everybody hear me? Got only one. Can we have some more of you commenting in the chat box because I need this to be interactive? Yes, it's very good. Yeah, so can you also mute yourselves because I've not muted you, otherwise I'll have to do that because as people come in, everybody's... Thank you, thank you for all those responses. Okay, so let's get started now that everyone's muted. Uh, Okay, so let's 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 get on with this, yeah. So let's go through a little bit of a brief about what we've done over the last, so that I can bring you up to speed with what we are doing today. So when we looked at all this in the very first first uh, session about three weeks ago or four weeks ago, this is the fourth one. Uh, we said if you need to restore your health, you need to ensure a good and proper supply of nutrients. So two Sunday ago. Two Sundays ago, we actually went to the entire nutrition part and how many foods provided with bad, bad nutrition, despite the fact that we eat, we are always malnourished. Last Sunday, we looked at the removing toxicities, especially heavy metals. And today, we are looking at correcting hormone deficiencies, maintaining mental peace, maintaining a body which is pain-free and structurally sound, right? So this is what we are going to look at today. Now, I also remind, remember I told you that when we look at any kind of disease, it's normally a manifestation of imbalances in these five areas, rather than any one of them going haywire. So it's always going to be one of these five that are going to be causing you problems. Okay. And generally, it will always be more than one cause. For example, when we look at weight gain, it is normally an imbalance in the hormones. So you'll have insulin, thyroid, cortisol, and we will see that right through this presentation of the next one hour or one and a half hour, how all these play a role. Then it also talks about how nutrients that activate fat breakdown and muscle development don't uh, work the way they're supposed to work. We spoke about toxicities. They also actually give you this problem of uh, weight gain, and therefore you need to get them out. And finally, your state of mind also causes weight gain. So in weight gain itself, four of the five causes are attributed to weight gain. Similarly, when you look at cognitive decline that we see now, a lot earlier than what we used to see maybe about 10, 15 years ago, where we used to see people over the age of 60 getting cognitive decline. Today, you see it at a much earlier age, people losing their, their, their memory, they're forgetting, they don't remember what's happening, they're getting unnecessarily stressed out because of it. Again, is a due to hormone deficiencies, nutrient deficiencies, toxicities, and mind imbalances, specifically stress. If you remember today, if you even look around today, people who complain of these problems generally are people who are really stressed out. You look at bone decline. Again, it is caused by deficiencies of the hormones, uh, of the nutrients, toxic overload, especially acidity and heavy metals, and bowel toxins that prevent the absorption of nutrients. So yes, every symptom that you get comes due to the reason that 
one of these three or four or five areas is affected. And it's generally not one single area, it's normally more than one. It's always two, three or four that contribute to that one symptom that you get, whether it's the bone decline, whether it's cognitive decline, whether it is a weight gain. So weight gain is the symptom, but there is something much deeper underlying that. And therefore you don't tend to get rid of these symptoms, Why? Right? Because you're not taking care of the causes that cause it. You don't go deep down to look at why am I putting on weight? Why is it that my bones are getting thinner? Why is it that my joints are not working the way they're supposed to be? Why is it that I'm losing my memory? There are far greater things in play at play and you need to look at all of them and try and put them together to ensure that you live a healthy life. Have we got this much? Then please type yes in the chat box. Can I have your answers, please? Please type yes so that you, I understand that you are also following what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so whether we aim to cure or prevent a symptom or a disease, the basic five areas must be addressed. Establish a healthy and labeling mind, correct the deficiencies of hormones, nutrients, remove the toxicities, get the body pain free and strong. By reestablishing this balance, we achieve optimal cellular function so the cells of the body can do what they do best, keep us healthy. This is something that we all need to understand. Whatever happens, we need to look at actually getting all these five areas properly balanced out so that we can actually allow the body to heal us. My dear friends, if you look at so many things and so many experience that probably even you must have had. If you look at anyone going undergoing surgery, your surgery doesn't heal you. The body finally has to heal you. The body has to heal that cut that takes place. If the body's immune system and the healing is not optimum, you will not get proper healing. And this is seen time and again in so many patients. That is the reason why people say, if you have diabetes, your sugars are uncontrolled, your BP is uncontrolled, we can't do the surgery. We need you to come under control. Why? Because the body is in imbalance. The cells cannot heal what modern medicine wants to do. That is cut you open. That is to create a artificial damage there by opening you up. In some cases, you need to do that surgery. But in most cases, maybe you don't need to. But either way, your body needs to heal you. It's the same here. You need to let the body heal itself. And for which you need all the five basic elements to work in tandem. Good nutrition. Remove the toxicities. Ensure that your hormones are in balance because those are the ones that actually send all the messages across, across the body as to what has to happen and what doesn't have to happen. Then that there's not too much of stress and you have a calm mind. And finally, a strong body so that we know that you are in a position, you are actually, your body is actually ready to do what it needs to do. And if you have this in proper balance, only then do your cells do what they're supposed to do. That is to heal you and keep you healthy. So the option of you and your, of you being healthy is with you. It's not with your doctor. It's not the medication you take. It is how you decide to balance all these five areas in your body and ensure that you live a healthy life. Are we getting this? Can we have a few yeses in the chat box, please, so that I understand that you are with me till now? Yes, please. Let me see how many people have responded. Thank you to all of you who are responding. Can we have a few more? Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice, thank you.
So when we need to restore hormones, this is something I must tell you is very difficult in our country because generally we do a lot of restoration with commercial hormones. That's not the way this is done. So we need to understand why we need to do it and how it is to be done. And this is probably one of the most advanced medical treatments that's available in the US today. And in Europe, where a lot of people use this to live a more balanced life, a, a, a life with less disease, uh, and even to kind of reverse the chronic disease that they have uh, many a times, including diabetes. So let's look at this in a little more detail. Why do we need uh, to restore hormones? One of the reasons we need to restore hormones is because of symptoms. I just showed you three symptoms. I showed you weight gain. I showed you uh, cognitive decline and I showed you bad bones, the pain that you get in your bones, the pain that you get in your, in your joints. All this uh, is a result of a hormonal imbalance, a nutritional imbalance, toxicities and stress that is the imbalance of the mind and the body. So symptoms, the moment you get any symptoms, there are certain hormones responsible for but in fact, the more compelling reason is the more your, your, your hormones go down, the chances of you getting some degenerative disease or the other is very high. So when you start balancing this or supplementing these, you prevent degenerative disease from setting in early. In fact, today, due to the huge problems that we have had, and I spoke about this last time, the kind of exposure to all all kinds of toxicities, including electromagnetic radiations, we age much earlier. And I will show this to you as we go along. There, is, there are a lot of studies which show that what would hap, hap, happen about 55, 60, about two generations ago, today is happening at 35, 40. Now, if you start getting a BP problem or diabetes at the age of 35, 40, because of your life expectancy going up, you're going to be living up to the age of 75, 80. Therefore, you will be living a life, a majority of your life as a sick person. Now, the choice is yours, whether you want to do that or you want to delay this degenerative disorders getting in and making you a sick person much earlier than they should be doing, right? So studies show that every brain cell in the body, every has a receptor for thyroid, for estrogen, which is the female hormone, progesterone, which is the second female, female hormone, testosterone, which is the male hormone, and so does every heart cell, every nerve cell, every bone cell, every vascular cell, and every skin cell. What does this mean? It means that your hormones work all over the body. It is not that, okay, the sex hormones will work only on the sex organ. Thyroid will work only on the thyroid gland or, as, or something like that. It's each of these hormones that go out and work on the entire body. Therefore, when you give us a, 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 a hormone that does not resemble what is made by the body or what we call bioidentical hormones, you tend to generally cause a lot of side effects because it cannot act on other parts of the body where it's supposed to act. Are you aware that progesterone and estrogen and testosterone, the sex hormones, have the largest number of receptors in the brain, not on the ovaries, not on the testes, not, not in the uterus. It is in the brain. So if you do not give bioidentical hormones, hormones that are exactly, or don't use bioidentical hormones, hormones that are exactly identical to the way the body makes it, you are in for side effects. And that is why this particular session is very important. It's a short session. I just want to ensure that you understand this, yeah? Now, so, if you look at what the last slide says, you will now understand that if the hormone levels decline, so will the stimulation of these cells. Because if it is required for each cell to function normally, and if you don't get the hormone and the hormone levels go down, so will the function of those cells. And as the stimulation of the cells decline, they start degenerating, leading to a whole lot of symptoms. 
So your sexual decline, your fatigue, your anxiety, your mood swings, weight gains, insomnia, that is lack of sleep, cognitive decline that we spoke of, where you start losing your memory and other things. More importantly, rapid progression of degenerative disorders. So if you have heart disease, it starts progressing very fast. If you have cognitive disease, it starts moving very fast and you start getting senile and, and even Alzheimer's and Parkinson's starts setting in. If you have osteoporosis, you, it starts moving very, very fast. And all these set in at a very, very early pace and a very, very rapid pace, early stage and rapid pace. So if you want to defer this, ensure that you live a good life, restore your health, you need to preserve the action and the stimulation of cells. And that can be done when you restore the hormones at what we call physiological levels. Now, what are physiological levels? Levels that your body would produce normally, maybe at the age of 20, maybe at the age of 30, but whatever age level that you want your body to behave at, you need to get them at those physiological levels. And this has to be done by supplement because as you start growing up, the hormones start declining. As the hormones start declining, you start aging. All the aging disorders, the root cause is the hormone decline. It's never the other way around. It's never because your age has gone up, your hormones have gone. It is because your hormones have started going down, you have started aging. And therefore today, a number of people at just at the age of 40 look to be 60. Why? Because they are aging prematurely. Because their hormone imbalance has set in very early. Could be a number of reasons for that. Could be toxicities, could be bad uh, nutrition, could be a whole lot of exposure to a whole lot of external forces. But it is happening. And a large majority of our women are suffering because of their, pre, uh, because of their premature menopause. I have been getting a lot of this patient. Why? PCOD at the age of 18, 19, 20 is as bad where young girls cannot get married because they have got PCOD, because they're not getting their normal menses and they may never get pregnant. So this becomes a societal problem as well. So we need to understand that these diseases can be reversed if you physiologically try to treat the levels of the hormones in these patients. Okay, have you got this much? Can you have yeses in the chat box, please? And I will teach Go by each, by each one of them. Let me see what the time is, if I have all the time. Yes, we are on, we are on schedule. Okay, so when we start off, thank you for the responses. When we start off, generally, the problem starts with women. Around the age of 35, generally, progesterone is the first to decline. Now, when this happens, what are the symptoms that you see? You suddenly start getting a lot of anxiety, panic attacks, lighter sleep. Uh, you have what is known as premenstrual syndrome where you get pain, just very severe pain just before your menses start coming. Wild mood swings at the age of 35 and you're wondering why your menopause is still 10, 15, 20 years ahead. Fibroids, very, very common because you see the progesterone, progesterone acts like a counterbalance to estrogen. So when progesterone starts to decline, estrogen starts going up. When that happens, fibroids in the breast, ovarian cysts, fib uh, heavier irregular bleeding, and most importantly, weight gain. Why? Because estrogen itself is a weight gain hormone. So any amount of exercise at this stage is not going to make you lose your weight. No diet is going to help you lose your weight. Why? Because you have a menstrual issue, you have a hormonal issue, and hormonal reasons for weight gain do not allow anything else to supersede. Even if you don't eat, you'll put on more weight. Only if you balance your hormones with your weight start coming down. One reason why many women have a difficult time losing weight when they start having these problems. Progesterone is also responsible for bone building. So women start losing their bone around 30, start thinning. Many women have hot flushes and a lower sex drive with the declining progesterone. So these are some of the symptoms that you see around the age of 35. Immediately after that, around the age of 40, the second hormone, which is estrogen, starts to decline. And within three years or so, you start getting the official menopause around 48, 50, which is much earlier than 
then maybe about two or three decades ago, when you used to get your menopause at about 55, 60. Now, once the estrogens again start going down, again your heart valve flush is done. But for women, they experience far greater problems. They experience dryness of the skin, recurrent ur urinary infection, vaginal dryness. Most importantly, urinary incontinence. What is urinary incontinence? They don't, when they finish passing urine, you still have some more urine, urine that dribbles out. Or you can't hold your urine in uh, too long. You have to rush to the toilet. Bone loss is very common because anyway, progesterone has gone down. So again, further loss is seen when the estrogen starts declining. And of course, with the estrogen going down, you have cognitive decline in women. Very, very important to understand this. Now, the risk in women is what? Why are we so bothered about this? And this is something that I need you to understand. For women, hormone balancing is much, much more important than males because the males have just one or two hormones in it, or, or maybe four hormones you need to look at. For females, it's a myriad of hormones. They have many of them. There are 40 different estrogens themselves. So you need to understand that it is like a symphony. Any one of those goes haywire, the whole symphony looks out of out of tune. And that is exactly what happens in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a woman's body. Now, women are most protected during their 30s and early 40s when their hormone levels are at the highest. It's only after menopause that they have an increased risk for stroke, heart attacks, and breast cancer. Very rarely do you get breast cancer if your hormone levels are normal, they are they are at their peak, they are at their optimum best. If those are affected, the chances of breast cancer being there are very high. Data suggests that hormone imbalances contribute to breast cancer. And there is tons and tons of data today. Of course, today we also know that there are certain causes which are non-hormonal, which also cause breast cancer. But a majority of breast cancers come from hormonal imbalance. We know that the most Breast cancers occur after menopause. That's again a fact. And it's at a time when the ovaries stop producing normal amounts of hormones, which in turn affects the balance of the hormone. So once you understand this concept, you can then realize that that is the time that you start either supplementing your hormones to prevent the cancer from getting in, to prevent the heart attacks from coming in, to prevent the stroke from coming in, to prevent ordinary blood pressure problems from attacking you or even diabetes from attacking you. So as long as your hormones are good, all these five diseases which we see so commonly in most of our population as they age does not attack you. But the moment your hormones start getting imbalanced, these all come like a big uh, group that attacks your body and then you start feeling sick and you start wondering, I was so good about three, four years ago, why am I so feeling so sick? There is a reason for this. And if you do it right, you don't even feel all this. You can actually live a very, very comfortable life. I have tons of patients who come to me for this, who live a normal life if we balance a little bit of their hormones here and there, and I'll show you what we do. Then, when the progesterone, and, and I, I just want you to, to understand how it works. And this is very, very important. Please understand this. This is made for a medical audience, but I try to make it as simple as possible for all of you to understand uh, as a lay audience what exactly happens. First, progesterone, which prevents breast cancer, declines from the age, uh, declines maybe in the late 30s, about 35, like I said. But 10 years later, you have estrogens that go away. Now, you need to understand this particular thing, that estrogen, what we actually test for is E2. It is known as estradiol. That's the major estrogen present in the woman. Normally, most of the times, E2, and what is its role? The role of progesterone and estrogen is to prepare the uterus for a pregnancy. That is the natural role of these hormones. As far as the... Uh, as their actual purpose is concerned. Of course, with that, they have a whole lot of other uh, other actions that they also do all across, all over the body, without which the rest of the body also won't function. But this is one of their primary jobs as they, as uh, in the body, 
normally. So what basically happens is most of your early part of your life, your E2 gets converted into E3. Now E3 is estriol. It's another estrogen. This one is required to maintain your pregnancy as and when a woman gets pregnant. E3 maintains that pregnancy. It prevents clots from forming. It prevents all the fibroids in the breast from forming. But as you grow older and as your progesterone goes down, E3, E2, E3 conversion goes down from 80% in the earlier part of your life to 10%. That means earlier, 80% of E2 would get converted to 8, E3. Now only 10% is getting converted. And where does the rest go? It goes to something known as estrone, which is E1, which is the dangerous variety of estrogen. And this then from 10% goes up to 80%. And once it starts going up that, that high, it actually causes fibroids, it causes the clot stimulation, and therefore you have strokes, BP problems, heart attacks, and of course, fibroids, both fibroid of the breast, fibroids of the uterus, uh, cysts in the ovary, all this is because of estrone going up. And this is not really, really good because when you have high estrone levels, certain uh, forms of estrone, you know, as they get, uh, metabolized are carcinogenic and mutagenic. That means they actually cause cancers. Like the 16 hydroxy estrone does cause cancer. So you need to restore the protective levels of progesterone so that first and foremost estrogen is balanced. And once it's as it is balanced, you also need to ensure that it does not convert to estrone. It only converts to estriol. Have we got this so much? It's a little complicated. I just want you to pay attention. Can we get your yes, please? Now, studies show that hormones are protective on the heart and the brain. Now, here is something that I want you to understand. What most doctors would be prescribing to you would not be a progesterone when progesterone goes down. It would be a progestin. This is where modern medicine found something fishy. Oh, sorry, modern medicine missed the bus. I won't say found something fishy. Missed the bus. What was done fishy was pharma decided, hey, listen, we are not going to get paid for progesterone. Why are we not going to get paid for progesterone? Because you cannot trademark a naturally occurring substance. Progesterone occurs naturally in our bodies, both in males and females. How can you trademark that? So while they were okay in making progesterone, they could not trademark it. As a result of which, they took it and they modified it in the lab and they gave it a name and that became a progestin. So once you modify it and you take progestin, they are directly shown in five trials that were done to create breast cancer and create clots. They do create complications when compared to natural progesterone. Natural progesterone is known to protect you from clot formation, from breast cancer, strokes, from heart attacks, and even from diabetes and blood pressure. Okay, Now, what we do instead, instead of giving you a progestin or a, 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 a primaverin, which is a primaverin, which is a, a primarin, which is a, a synthetic uh, estrogen, which is basically coming from horse union, by the way, we give you bioidentical estradiol in the form of creams, which goes through your skin. This is recognized by the body as something similar to what was what it is used to. It is it sees it as something that is produced within the body because chemically it is identical to what is produced in the body, and this is delivered through the skin, as against E1, which is delivered through the mouth. So when you are restoring this, you need to understand what kind of hormones you are using. So when a doctor prescribes any kind of hormones, you ask him what is this? Is this natural progesterone? You do get natural progesterone today orally. But the ideal way to do it is by using it transdermally, that is in the form of a cream. Not easily available in India, can definitely not be found in your local pharmacy. You have special pharmacies that do it, certain doctors do it. It's expensive here. When I was practicing in Malaysia, 
We should do it on a regular basis because there I should get tons of patients used to come and tell us, Doc, we don't want this problem going forward. We want to live a life which is healthy and happy. So they spend a lot of money on preventive medicine. So this becomes prevention for any kind of chronic degeneration. Slowly, we are getting that in India as well. A lot of clinics across Bombay and Delhi are doing it. A lot of people are making it in their clinics and giving it to patients because this is not difficult to compound and give you because natural progesterone is available from big pharma. They take it to the lab, they, 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 they modify it, make it into a synthetic substance and give it to you. When you have a synthetic substance instead of a natural normal, you start getting problems. And therefore, this is something that has been happening all over. Yeah, so Firo, that's not a fact. You have something known as transdermal. That's the best. It is, it is the biggest organ in your body. We have used a whole lot of measures to show that the skin actually gives you both detoxification as well as absorbs a lot. In fact, please understand that you need your, your, your the creams that we give you are what are known. Uh, they are very special form of creams which do not immediately cause a high in your body. They are slowly absorbed over eight hours. Uh, and yes, it is available and that's a wrong fact. You've got it wrong from somewhere. Even putting toxins which are preservatives in your skin care for your face can give you problems. Ordinary kajal, which is used by women for cosmetic purposes, causes a lot of toxicity in the body because the skin absorbs it. So skin absorbs anything, anything that is thrown on it. Please remember that. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Feroz, for that question. But please remember, it absorbs anything. We actually even give for people whose uh, BP does not come down with normal anti-BP medications or normal BP medication. They're taking three, four of them. Over a period of time, we do give them oral magnesium. We also give them something known as magnesium baths where we tell them, go and have a bath in a bathtub with a lot of magnesium in there. All that gets absorbed through the skin. It actually reduces your blood pressure rhythm. So yes, the skin is a very good route, a delivery route for all kinds of medications. Now, having said this much about women's hormones, let's look, let's look at testosterone. In the last five years, that I have been consistently having a lot of patients in Bombay because I started a clinic. I had clinics earlier, but I used to come only once or twice a month. Now they're every week and I've been seeing tons of young patients coming to us with sexual decline, especially males. Why does this happen? At that too, early 30s, not even late 30s, early 30s, just after their marriage, they are saying, we can't, we're having issues or we're going to get married, we're having issues, please help us doctor. Generally, this happens because of low testosterone. When you check their nice testosterone, yes, there is a decrease in testosterone. And this affects their desire for sex, the joint and bone pain increases, there's a whole lot of muscle weakness, they have muscle, even despite their exercise, that start wasting, loss of confidence, very, 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 very commonly seen and very prominent. Moodiness, depression, anxiety, muscle loss, and fat gain. So they start putting on a paunch very easily. Testosterone restoration is not, does not only address all these symptoms, it does not only take care of all this, but more importantly, it prevents these people from getting heart disease, cognitive decline, and bone loss. I know very, very uh, senior doctor, uh, colleague of mine, uh, who's now no longer practicing, once told me when I was very young, he says, uh, Lenny, if you're ever looking at uh, patients like this, always remember, if a male comes to you and he says that he's got erectile dysfunction, that is his first heart attack. He's going to get another one within the next three to five years. 
99% of the times, whenever I have predicted this, it has come correct because this is science. Your testosterone goes down. Testosterone is a protection against heart attacks for you. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a protection against all chronic degenerative disorders. So when you have erectile dysfunction, your testosterone levels go down. If your testosterone levels go down, you are exposing yourself to the risk of getting a heart attack. And this is something that modern medicine somehow has ignored. Unfortunately, despite all the data being there in all the modern uh, journals, we tend to ignore it because we today practice medicine that big pharma tells us to practice. That's unfortunate. That's, that's actually very, very unfortunate. And that is one of the reasons why today we are suffering the way we are because of this very, very small virus that has brought us all to our knees, stopped the way we used to live. We don't know how we're going to live without it. Just still, still scared of it. Just yesterday, I told somebody, I said, if you stay being scared to, about it, it will keep dominating us. We need to get out and understand that we have a system that can take care of it. If our hormones are well balanced, if our bodies and minds are strong, if our nutrition is correct, and if we have removed the toxicities, no virus can attack us, my dear friends. You need to understand this. We have a very strong immune system. We are built that way, but we have weakened it, and then we have an abnormal response. A weak immune system abnormally responds to any kind of attack. It over responds. And in this case of this Corona or COVID-19 infection, it causes what is known as a cytokine storm. A cytokine storm is an overreaction of the immune system. It happens when you have an underperforming immune system. And one of the reasons this happens is because we have bad hormonal balance. Firoz, I'll come to that at the end of the session. Your question, I will take up a little later. Yeah. I will answer it, but just remind me. So I just put this particular slide here to make you understand that we cannot change estradiol to progesterone and progesterone to estradiol or testosterone to estradiol and estradiol to testosterone. It cannot happen in a lab. But in the human liver, this does happen. And it is very, very, very important that you understand this. Because this is where also a lot of aging disorders come in. And let me explain this to you one minute. Before that, I just want to, before I go to that, I want to tell you about a little more about this. I think I missed this. Yes. So when we started actually restoring testosterone, a lot of my colleagues turned out and said, uh, you, testosterone will give heart attacks and cause prostate cancer. So I actually went down at that time. It was about 12, 15 years ago when I started using this in India. I went down and did a whole lot of studies and looked at it. And many of my colleagues sent me a lot of the data that was available. And it was surprising that Heart attacks are caused in, in men where the testosterone levels are low. If you had heart attacks in high testosterone cases and prostate cancer, then at the age of 20, where the boy, a, a, a male at the age of 20, has the highest level of testosterone, should have had breast cancer and heart attacks. It doesn't happen. New England Journal of Medicine in 2004 actually said that low testosterone and high estrogen, and I will show it to you in the next slide, is associated with prostate cancer. And cardiology literature has shown men to maintain testosterone levels in upper ranges have a lower cardiac and neurological events, low risk of cardiology, cardiac and neurological events. What does it mean? It means that if your testosterone levels are good, you will never, never get heart disease. You will never, ever get neurological events happening in your body. This is the risk in men. Now, why is it so important? That's why I remembered when I looked at that slide, which, which went on. I just told you that in a human, it's only in a human liver that this transfers take place, that a male hormone becomes a female hormone. It happens when you have certain, uh, certain enzymes that do this. In this case, you have aromatase. Aromatase 
actually converts testosterone into estradiol as you start aging. When you have high estradiol, this causes prostate enlargement and can cause prostate cancer. Like estradiol can cause cancer of the uterus, uh, estradiol can cause cancer of the prostate. Prostate and uterus, the male prostate and the female uterus come from the same cell origin and embryology. That I don't want to, to bore you with that, but I'm just telling you, I want to mention this. So this is what happens in the liver. So when you start supplementing testosterone in males, you need to always look at the amount of estradiol that is already present in them before you start supplementing. Because that will give you an idea how active aromatase is. And that's what we do generally. We always check all the hormone levels, whether it's for male or female, before we start uh, actually supplementing them. And why this is important? This is important because you will understand which of the hormones are converting into what before you start. Unless uh, you, you know that you should not be on any hormone supplementation because then only is this going to cause you problems. If you use bioidentical hormones, it will never cause you problems unless you do not do the proper checkups before you start the treatment because you need to understand what's happening in your body what your physiology is, what your biochemistry is. Without that, don't get into hormone replacement. How safe it is, let me explain this to you. Hormone, uh, hormone therapy, I'm not talking about bioidentical hormone therapy, I'm talking about normal hormone therapy, okay? Causes seven, seven, uh, seven patients to have cancer in every 10,000 women per year. Commercial estrogen and commercial progesterone or progestin actually causes nine people out of every 10,000 to have cancer a year. But you'll be surprised that if any woman takes statins, this number goes up to 77, 77 out of every 10,000 per year. So the risk of breast cancer in people taking statins is much, much higher than taking the normal hormone therapy, which is bad for you anyway, which does not give you the same kind of effect as bioidentical hormone replacement. And bioidentical hormone replacement is the safest. This was a study that was published by Dr. Howard Horace in Menopause, which is a very, very famous publication a world over in 2007 and since then all statins to women are to be given with caution because they can cause breast cancer okay now when we look at hormone replacement there's always a fear because they, we think that if you replace the hormone the chances of getting cancer are very high no my dear friends if you actually do hormone replacement the chances of your cancer of you getting cancer are much lower. Only problem is you need to know which hormones to use, the right ones, and how to use it. Regular testing is important to understand how the hormone behaves in your body. Having said this, these were some of the major truths that came out across the world. Whether hormone replacement is a dilemma or not a dilemma, uh, whether estrogen or whether it is bad clinical practice or it is wrong to prescribe the hormones and how you should prescribe it, a lot of discussions have taken place. But let me tell you, some of the most prominent people, women and men on this earth, whom you can see living well, are on hormone replacement. With the kind of exposure that they have to all kinds of problems, it's impossible for them to live without hormone balancing. So you need to do this, you need to understand it, but it has to be done by a qualified doctor who understands this, and please don't get it done. It's better you don't do it if you don't have the right doctor to handle it. Having said this, you also need to look at your thyroid. Why? Fatigue, mental slowness, depression, weight gain, skin dryness, constipation, feeling cold, hair loss, Simple breaking of nails, swelling at the ankle and palpitations could be all associated with the thyroid imbalance. So how does thyroid function go down? It can go down because the thyroid itself, the, 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 the production itself has gone down. 
But more than that, what happens is that where it's supposed to act, that receptor site is not functional. So while you may have good amounts of thyroid in your blood when we test you, you may not be able to actually use it for your body and therefore you have symptoms of hypothyroidism. And therefore it is not sometimes the normal levels and not the optimal levels, but the functional levels that are required. Because if you do not have a proper ferritin, proper zinc, selenium, iodine, or any of the cofactors uh, that are required, then you may have issues uh, which uh, any of the cofactors that are needed to activate this hormone, the thyroid hormone, you may have a chance that the thyroid doesn't function. I want to actually just explain to you when you have a low thyroid, generally we write a T4 for you. T4 is, uh, is uh, thyroxine that you get. Now this thyroxine, when it enters the body, it has to get converted into T3. If it doesn't get converted into T3, there is no function of that thyroid. So the active thyroid hormone in your body is T3, triadothyronine. Now T3 is formed from T4 only in the presence of zinc, selenium, iodine, and ferritin. If you don't have these, especially zinc, it's very difficult. So when you start, when you understand this and you don't have some of these cofactors, sometimes this T3, the T4, gets converted into what is known as reverse T3, and it's an irreversible conversion. Reverse T3 does not work anywhere in your body. It's a waste of your thyroid hormone, and you don't even check for it. So when we look for thyroid in functional medicine, we look at T3, T4, TSH, but we also look for something known as free T3 and free T4 because this tells us whether your hormone, your thyroid hormone is functional or not. When it comes to insulin, the more you put on weight, the chances of you having insulin resistance are high because insulin, again, is a weight gain hormone. Your lower abdomen, your thighs, underarms, chin, all these show that there is high amounts of insulin in your body. Why do you get high amount of insulin? Because of the kind of food that you eat. I spoke about it last Sunday, uh, two Sundays ago. The more you eat uh, high sugar foods, high carbs, your insulin resistance goes up. The amount of insulin that your body secretes to kind of convert this into, into glucose that will enter the, the, the cells goes up. So have the glucose to enter the cells goes up. And therefore, uh, you have high amounts of insulin in your body, high amounts of uh, glucose in your body. So this becomes a pre-diabetic state. Many of us don't exercise. Our calorie is very high. Uh, the amount of carbs that we take are high. Our diets in India are so carb heavy. And then even if we don't have sugars, we go and have uh, things which have a higher insulin index. I wouldn't say a, a, a calcific index, a, 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 not calcific, a, a calorific index, but a higher insulin index. And a lot of people have this high insulin index. Like if you go and have high corn fructose syrup, which also causes insulin to peak. Uh, what is high corn fructose syrup? It is the sugar that is used in all the so-called sugar-free juices. It's also used in all your um, uh, sauces, right from barbecue sauce to tomato ketchups. It's highly addictive. The more you eat it, the more your brain wants it. But it also causes fatty level and it also causes insulin resistance, okay? Uh, so when you have high insulin, there's always a chance of more sugar craving. You get a lot of sleepiness, you, have, you feel sleepy because what happens is the moment you eat something, there's so much of sugar, the sugar goes down, your, your brain can't get it. But again, it, it goes up because then if it suddenly goes down, the liver will make more sugar and push it up even if you don't have it. So you have sugar cravings, you have severe sleepiness, you have dizziness, you have headache, uh, and these things keep happening. The yo-yo effect keeps happening, causing a huge metabolic imbalance, giving rise to a whole lot of problems because insulin on its own, on its own, is a risk factor for heart disease. So if you want your insulin to be coming down, you need to exercise regularly and reduce the amount of carbs uh, that you, uh, not only sugar, 
even your carbs have to be only 20 to 30 percent of your uh, of your diet and that is what i actually spoke about uh, about two weeks ago we are going to come to exercise just after this and i'll explain to you how to go about it yeah so that is as far as insulin is concerned you please remember insulin is a risk factor for heart disease you need to be very very cautious when you start putting on weight now there are other hormones like dha melatonin which is a sleep hormone and a very powerful anti-cancer hormone if you're having sleep problems melatonin is one today's day and age melatonin causes a whole lot of problems for you because if you are constantly on any blue light that comes from any screen whether it's your tv whether it's your computer whether it's your cell phone after 7 38 you are preventing the melatonin from coming from your pineal gland where it is formed that's below the brain right at the base of the skull there's a pineal gland that causes the melatonin to be secreted and that is the one that causes uh, protects you gives you good sleep uh, ensures that you don't have any cancer but if you keep watching this this blue light affects the pineal gland and you don't get enough melatonin pregnenolone is another one specifically for memory and concentration growth hormone we have been using a lot of growth hormone recently where we help people with stroke uh, and with severe cachexia to help to, to, to get out of it yes Any questions on that? I will touch upon later. Piro just asked me that question later. Uh, so these are the other hormones I'm going to look at. Now, what are the tips? You need to use all forms of hormones. Uh, sorry, only those forms of hormones that are exactly identical to your body's molecular structure. That is called bioidentical hormones. Otherwise, the body looks at it as a foreign object it does or a foreign body it does not recognize it and therefore the side effects are caused because of that hormone replacement should always be accompanied by the correct nutrients with it you need to have the cofactors uh, the other uh, nutrients which which act uh, as uh, uh, as cat uh, as catalysts to all these biochemical reactions like the b vitamins the zinc the selenium all of that so you need these uh, hormones to be accompanied with all that. If it doesn't come, come in with the right nutrients, it is not going to work the way you want it to work. It also is important uh, that you look at the hormone function rather than the hormone level. Now, what does this mean? You may get a report from, from a lab which shows your hormone levels in a uh, very normal level or normal range. I'll just give you a simple example of thyroid. So free T3 levels, normally the range in most labs is between 1.7 to 4.5. You check your thyroid hormone in the morning at 8 o'clock when the hormone level is at the highest. By evening, it comes to half of that. Now, when you, when you check in the morning, it is, let's say, 2 what would happen in the evening when it's half? It is one. One is way, way below the normal level of 1.7. So you need to understand the hormone function. The hormone function is optimal when the hormone level is in the upper third of the range that your lab gives. So when we look at thyroid hormones or we look at any hormones, we're looking at the upper third of the range. If it is in that upper third, you have optimal hormone levels. Okay. So to achieve this optimal function, you need to use all the different deficient hormones not just one so you need to look at every one of them and see which one is going up and down because if one has gone up and down the other one will also deviate and you need to understand which to use so a good doctor will use all all the hormones never go with only one hormone unless the doctor tells you why he's doing it and when we look at cortisol and insulin yes what we are going to talk next is going to give you the answers for that because there is no magic pill for cortisol High cortisol comes in when you have stress. So you need a calm mind and a good body. For high insulin, you need good exercise. And we come to how. So hormones require attention to stress reduction, adrenal support, detoxification, lifestyle changes, and insulin support. All this needs to be done if you want your cortisol levels to 
come down and your insulin levels to be coming down to normal. You get to that, kiddos, you need to ask me that question at the end of the session. Uh, yeah. So now let us look at, and, 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 and this will answer, yes. Uh, so when you're looking at balancing the mind and the body, it is probably the most powerful intervention uh, that we do when we are looking at restoring your health. Without targeting the mind and the body, you will not get the, re the, the required results that you as a patient are looking for. Uh, there's enough scientific evidence that shows that the mind is responsible for a whole lot of repair, maintenance, and prevention of age-related disorders, and so is the body. Uh, you have to understand that I have been seeing elderly patients for a long, long time now. 90% of them actually get sick or get worse or start losing it when their stress levels go up. So the mind and how you think is very, very important. Uh, giving them antidepressant is the worst thing that you can do because it doesn't calm the mind at all. Giving chemicals cannot affect the mind. Mind has to be touched upon by human touch, by conversation, by communication, and by changing the way we think. That is very, very important. And you need to calm it. And there are ways to do it. And we're coming to that. Every disease has been shown to be associated with some stress of mind in some way or the other. Uh, the body process is affected by not only the state of mind and even the energy produced by mental intention, which can produce change at the cellular level. And that is so very important. In fact, today, if we are scared of this virus, just that scare at the mind level will, will ensure that you actually are prone to it. The day you put that scare out of your mind and you say, my body can take it, I am healthy, we will take care of anything that comes, we will see. That is when your mind moves differently. The neurotransmitters that are released because the mind is no longer stressed about a particular situation are healthier. They improve your immune system and they ensure that you are of a strong mind and a strong body. So you need to understand that mind and the body must be addressed if you want to restore your health. This is how we start our, our average day. This is what happens by the middle of the day. And this is what happens at the end of the day. We are so stressed out that 24 by 7, we live a stressed life. We don't give our bodies that rest that is required from the huge cortisol influx that is thrown at us. And this cortisol influx can create complications going forward, leads to premature aging, causes chronic degenerative disorders like cancer, diabetes, uh, heart disease, and a whole lot of other disorders that come in. So you need to look at actually calming your mind down. So how do you do this? Easy, easier said than done, stop stressing. Very, very simple, stop stressing. How do you do it? So yes, the science of meditation, India is famous for it. If we in India don't know how to take care of our mind, nobody else in the world will know because we were the hub where all, it all started. We've got so many ancient texts that we don't make use of it. And it's sad. Yoga started here, but it is, there are, there are about 3,000 or more uh, uh, patents on yoga which have been registered in the US. It's very, very unfortunate. So yes, yoga is one of the ways of doing it. Meditation is one. Uh, so what you need to understand is make yourself the center of your own universe. Set your intention. That's where your mind comes in. You need to set that intention to achieve good health and peace in all that you do. What others think about you is their problem. It's not yours. Don't live your life to other people's standards. Live it to your own. You set your intention the way you want to live, whether it's with your wealth, whether it's with your money, whether it's with your health, whether it's with your work, whether it's with your family, or even leisure, how you spend your time uh, in leisure or leisure the way you want to do it in holidays, etc. You need to set this for yourself. And it's only when you set it for yourself, you will achieve it. And you will be happier and more calm. The moment you start living at others, on other standards is when your stress sets in. 
So always take care of yourselves first, honor your own needs first, and then you can be strong enough to help others take care of themselves. So without taking care of yourselves, you can't even take care of your own families. So understand this. In today's day and age, this is one of the most important interventions you can do for yourself today. Don't, don't get worried about what other people have to say. Don't get carried away by what other people have to say. Always remember, you are the center of your universe. You need to take care of yourself first if you need to take care of others. Then you strengthen your body with yoga, tai chi, gi kong. These are all regular exercises which deal with breathing. Just normal breathing is shown to cut the cancer, heart disease, and cognitive decline by 30%. Just try it. There's lots and lots and lots of studies showing this. All you need to do is breathe. So whenever you are stressed out, there are two things I suggest to my patient. One, if you can't do anything else, stop what you're doing and take 10 deep breaths and count from 100 to 1 reversely as you're doing. Number two, if you can't further handle it, just get out of the place that you are in. Go out, go to the toilet and laugh as loud as possible. What does this do? It allows for good neurotransmitters to be released blocks cortisol secretion and breaks the stress break. So whenever you feel stressed, two things to do, read and laugh loudly. Then there are other things that you can do. I spoke about Epsom salts. Epsom salts, uh, Firoz, are nothing but magnesium salts. Magnesium salts used in a bathtub gives, gives you a chance for hydrotherapy. Indulge in this regularly, it brings your pressures down. It brings your pressures down, different neurotransmitters released, you feel much more relaxed. It actually calms your brain down. Always practice deep breathing at least for 5-10 minutes a few times a day, not just in the morning. Do it about 3 or 4 times a day so that you take those 10 to 15 deep breaths slowly and ensure that you are relaxing all your muscles while you're doing it. Sit on a nice comfortable chair and do it. There was a lot of review on transcendental meditation uh, and cardiovascular disease, and this is what it, these are the four findings that it had. It showed that there's a reversal of atherosclerosis, that is your arteries hardening and causing those blocks. It reduces the amount of, of decrease in the oxygen reaching your myoca uh, myocardium, that is your heart muscle, which is the cause of your heart disease most of the time. It reduces health insurance claims for cardiovascular disease. So people who should go for your bypasses and all came down. And this is not ours. This is an American study, which was the National Institute of Health, Public Access, and author manuscript. This is something that was published in 2004. It's available all over for you to see. It reduces mortality, most importantly. No other study has done this, showing the reduction of mortality just by meditation even if you are a heart patient. So imagine how powerful the mind is. Okay. Now, when you look at exercise, you need to exercise regularly. You need to exercise within the cardiac limits of tolerance. Always five aerobic sessions per week, 10 to 20 minutes each, and four sessions of non-aerobic exercise. Now, let me explain this to you. I don't have a slide for this. I'm going to explain this to you. And please understand what I'm going to say. You need to do exercise not on a treadmill. You need to get into a, a gym or at home on an extra cycle. Not on a treadmill if you are already above the age of 30, 35. It has to be on a treadmill, on an extra cycle. You cycle you, you, before you get, get on it, you get up in the morning, first have a glass of water, go to the loo, then come out, do your stretches, put on your good tennis shoes, do your stretches, and get on a cycle after two to five minutes of stretching. First two minutes, cycle very slowly. Then the next eight minutes, or even more, up to maximum 20 minutes, totally, uh, maximum 18 minutes. Every minute, you will cycle for 15 seconds fast, 45 seconds slow. 15 seconds fast, 45 seconds slow. 15 seconds fast, 45 seconds slow. This is known as interval training. When you do interval training, your body mimics what it used to do when it was a hunter-gatherer. What I mean by hunter-gatherer? A hunter-gatherer is what our forefathers were. They used to hunt for their food to survive. So what used to happen is 
90% of the times we were running away from somebody from being somebody else's food or we were running for our own food. And both were life-saving activities. When you have these life-saving activities that you're doing, this sprint slowdown, sprint slowdown mimics that life-saving activity. When you mimic that life-saving activity, the sugar used by the body is something known as glycogen, which is present in your muscles. The moment you do this, for the next 8 to 12 hours, all your fat stores in the body, over your stomach, over your thighs, over your buttocks, in your armpits, all the fat stores and those around your, your organs. That's the only way that you can get rid of the bad fat around the organ, uh, around your stomach, around your liver, around your pancreas, even around the heart in some cases. That fat is then converted into glycogen the next 8 to 12 hours. So your 20, 10 minutes or 20 minute exercise forces the glycogen, uh, forces the fat to reduce and get converted into glycogen. This is what, your, what this exercise does. In exchange, if you do a one hour walk, what happens in a one hour walk? The first 15 minutes, you're not even burning fat because whatever fat is circulating in your blood is being used. Then you start burning fat for the next 45 minutes. And then when you actually go back and have your first meal, all that fat is replenished. So yes, an ex walking keeps you good, makes you feel good, but it doesn't really change anything within the body and for the body. So the exercise has to do something for your body to keep it strong and keep it young. You need to have interval training. That is the best way. It reduces weight. It ensures that your... Uh, fat stores constantly are used up and fresh ones are created. So there's no fat, fat accumulation around the organs that is dangerous. Okay. What are anaerobic exercises? So if you have done 10 minutes of these exercises of, of, of interval training, then you do what is known as circuit training, which is anaerobic exercise. What is circuit training? You take dumbbells, you take upper arm body, you do 10 to 15 repetitions, let's say, of biceps. You do the biceps of both arms, 15 sessions. Immediately, without a break, do about 10 to 15 sessions of your triceps and maybe of the deltoid. So three exercises you will do on one day for the upper arms. One after the other, take a 30-second break. Again, the three exercises that you have done, repeat them, 30 seconds break. Another set of three exercises, one after the other. So you're doing, exercising three muscle groups, one after the other, but with a very light weight, not heavy weights. Those are known as non-aerobic exercises. Yes, this helps you to build strength, keep your body strong, and helps you to keep it firm. It doesn't start degenerating. So you need that as well. And therefore, you need to do this. This is known as circuit training. So I have said four sessions. So on Monday and Thursday, you will do the upper arms, on Tuesday and Friday, you will do the lower arms. Now, if you don't have weights, what is the other way of doing non-aerobic exercises? Yes, squats is one for the lower limbs. Push-ups is one for the upper limbs. You could do a flow push-up that is normally done. You could do a wall push-up or a half push-up on a parapet or something like that. Yes, these are some of the non-aerobic exercises that you can do. Uh, and uh, if you do them at home, I personally do 100 squats and 100 wall push-ups, half push-ups rather, every day. That is my non-aerobic exercises. I do anywhere between 12 to 20 minutes of interval training every day. And that is how I have maintained my body. I have brought down my insulin resistance. And I know that it does work with every patient of Yes, Divya, 15 seconds fast, 45 seconds slow. No, use a, use a, use a exercise cycle because when you use a regular cycle, you cannot keep pace of keeping this 15 seconds fast, 45 seconds slow. It is good to go out. It's like a walk. You can go down for a cycling tour on, on your Saturday and Sunday. Go for a one-hour cycling tour and come back. But when you're doing exercise on the other five days of the week, do it with an exercise cycle. You can do it in, in the swimming pool these days when it's hot as well, if it's permitted now. 
is, uh, as the lockdown comes out, you can actually swim for 15 seconds fast, 45 seconds slow, uh, 15 seconds fast forward. You can do that. You can also do it on a jogging track. You, you, you sprint for 10 seconds and then jog for 20 seconds. Sprint for 10 seconds and jog for 20 seconds. But this, and you see most of these football teams doing this, a lot of these cricketers doing this. This is damn good, and therefore they also remain fit. But the problem with this is that it, if as you grow older, it starts putting a lot of toll on your joints. Both your ankle and knee joint get affected. On a cycle, this doesn't happen. And it's much easier to do. You can do it at home. Just buy a cycle, do it by a bedside. Do it as if you're going to the toilet every day, like I do. Right? Now, I don't want you to follow this if you are over the age of 30 or taking any medications. Otherwise, when you're doing aerobics, then this is a way to do it where uh, you take your age and minus it from 220 and that is your maximum heart rate that you should reach. And you should not go beyond it. But that is not correct because today a lot of young patients who have BP problems take what are known as beta blockers. If you take what is known as beta blockers, beta blockers reduce your heart rate so you will get a wrong reading on this itself and you could cause problems for your heart so don't go by this this is for for athletes who have absolutely are taking no medications absolutely okay uh, yes you need to keep it uh, your heart rate has to be three fourths of your age uh, minus 220 or 220 minus age so let's say 220 your age is 60 220 minus 60 is 160 so your Heart rate should not cost 120, which is one, which is two thirds of 160. All right, have we got this? Have we got all this? Yeah, uh, anaerobic. I've just told you, endurance and cardiovascular fitness, and then yes, yoga improves your flexibility. Stretching improves your flexibility, and you decrease the chances of any injury. So, always stretching and a little bit of yoga here and there is always, always good. Now the key word in exercise is discipline. Whether it rains or snows, or it is too hot or too cold, some exercise either indoors or outdoors has to be performed. So irrespective of what you do, you need to exercise regularly. My friends, with this I come to the end of what I have to say.